This week, we're focusing on how to have some difficult conversations with our kids. And I think one of the most difficult conversations that we have kind of in our lives and in our culture is surrounded by death. What we do with death in our culture is really fascinating if you think about it. We kind of hide it. In our culture, we glorify youth, but think about it. We've put death into hospitals and nursing homes behind closed doors. We even scoot their body out of the back and then you don't see it again until it shows up cremated or or embalmed in a funeral. Uh, In our society, we have what author Caleb White calls a death negative narrative. Uh, In our society, death is considered negative. It's considered a really bad thing. It's something you want to try and avoid looking at or seeing or touching or feeling. Um, So how do we talk to our kids about death in a death negative society? So this uh, death negative narrative, uh, we usually imagine in our world, uh, death is this bony hand of the grim reaper. Is something hidden, something avoided? And why is a real big question. Caleb Wilde in his book, uh, Confessions of a Funeral Director, says these powerful words. He says, today doctors and nurses have replaced family and friends in an unintended consequence of the achievement of medical science. We fear death because we don't know it, because we don't see it, we don't touch it. And what we don't know, we've just painted in broad strokes of darkness and negativity. The death negative narrative wouldn't be so strong if we only had the ability to see and to touch and to hold our dying and our dead. Oh, that's powerful. When my mom was dying of cancer in her hospital bed, uh, we all had the chance to be around her. It actually was kind of a a beautiful thing. This included our kids, and we all gathered around her body as they turned off the machines that were keeping her alive and the medication that was keeping her alive. My mom, um, her lungs were failing, and so she didn't breathe very long without oxygen, only maybe an hour and a half uh, before the doctor came in and, and pronounced her dead, said that her, her heart had stopped too. Uh, what surprised me all at once, though, is just standing there is how beautiful it was. I was surprised because I expected to be like traumatized, but instead it was so beautiful. I looked at my mom's skin and and it was glowing and and all the people around me were, we were all crying, but it was was a holy, holy moment. You see, I, I never imagined that death could be so beautiful. I feared death before that. So how do we talk to our kids about death? So often I think we just use these platitudes because we don't know what to say. We say little things like, oh, grandma went to heaven or grandpa's with Jesus now. Or we spurt out bad theology that we've seen on cards at the gift shop that say everything happens for a reason or God needed another angel, which isn't true because angels and humans are just as different as cat and dogs. Uh, But I think we do this because we don't know what else to say. So we just say what we have heard. In our culture, we have made death so awkward and so so uncomfortable and so far from everything that we do in our daily lives. But have we ever stopped to wonder why? Why do we do that here in our culture? And here's the truth. We're all going to die. Every single one of us is going to die uh, either one day or the next. We don't get to control when that day comes. And so what if instead we took our conversations around death and just included them more in our everyday life? We uh, take the fish that we caught and we thank it for its life before we decide to cook it. Or we acknowledge that life comes from death. We look at the things that are dying around us as spring is coming up. We talk about seasonal growth or we spend time. We spend time with our kids, with people who are closer to death than we are, or at least we think that they are because they have a diagnosis or because they're older in age. What if we spent more time closer to death with intention and with love so that it wasn't quite so scary? So when the time that a loved one dies, we don't go through this death negative narrative, but instead we see death with a positive narrative. You see, a death positive narrative reminds us that uh, we're all connected and all our time and energy is limited. We're all connected and then Jesus rose from the dead so that God could be both the God of the living and the dead. And if we actually believe then that's true, then dying is not just holy, but it's good. 
And when we're sad and we're grieving, it's okay to remind our kids that it's not such a bad thing that they're gone, but the reason that we're grieving is because you had so much love between you and you miss them. Grief is not a bad thing. Grief is good. I'd say bring your tears right out front to the open and do it out loud. Death is good. And when we frame our conversations with our kids this way, when we make space for them to fully feel and experience all of the emotions that come with sadness, all the emotions that come with death, instead of numbing our emotions out of fear of them, then we let the kids know that they can handle those great, big, complicated, heavy emotions. When you talk to your kids, it's important to remember that they might be feeling different emotions than you are. Maybe around the death you're feeling angry and they're already feeling like they've accepted it and kind of keep it simple. Answer questions if they if you have the answer, like what was it that made grandma die? Answer those questions. But if you don't have them, don't give them a platitude. Just say, you know what, I don't have all the answers. This is another space where authenticity is far more important than authority. And then give your child the tools to remember this person or this pet or whatever it is that you are grieving. Uh, Make a service, mark it in some kind of remembrance, maybe a flower or a drawing, maybe light a candle. But it's important for us to mark death because it honors the feelings that we experience inside as well as honoring that which we're grieving. So consider a death positive narrative when you're talking to your kids. It's sad, but it's also holy and it's also good. God promises that if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. God's got us in life, in death, and if there's even that tiny little moment in between, God's got us there too.